Hey, good morning. I think it's, I think Brendan and the Google guys are going to be out. They're, I think they're in California for like a summit or something. So it's going to be us. Are we waiting for anybody else if uh no I don't think so okay, so some of the stuff I think requires at least um actually does anybody know if if uh in the very least Santiago can make it let me. So I, I, I want to make sure that he is also aware of some of the stuff we're trying to do here. Um, All right, I guess uh, we should probably get started. Uh, just a reminder, this meeting is being recorded. It'll be uploaded to LFX afterwards, and uh, your participation in this meeting is an agreement to abide by the OpenSSF uh, Code of Conduct. Um. So what, uh, yeah, what so opens I think, do we have? Yeah, so I think for this week, uh, the community meeting is happening mm -hmm. this Thursday. So I think we should have an agenda set for that uh, during the meeting. And then we also should do a release this week. So I think what I was thinking is I was going to um, work. I wanted to add in some more um, indexes to Ant. Or some of the queries just to make it more, more performant and then you're going to cut a release maybe sometimes this afternoon or tomorrow so i think that's one of the plans um so so we're gonna get that done so that should be ready so we should and then the other piece was last week we were discussing you know what does 1.0 mean so i know we don't have everybody on the call so we probably want to wait on that but um, I think Ben, just, 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 just so you understand, and if you had any questions, you know, please ask here, but it's like what we were trying to, uh, uh and the, the notes are there at the bottom and maybe you can move it up to the, to the opens, but basically what this, what we were trying to determine is like, what, what does it mean to be a 1.0? Like, basically it's like, you know, people can start, people can start using Guac without having to worry about it, you know, 
um, we're not going to introduce any kind of breaking changes and anything that we introduce, any new, new changes or anything else like that will be backwards compatible or we're going to provide some kind of a migration plan so that you can move forward, right? Uh, at the same time, we were talking about the different components that are there and ensuring like, are they all, do they all have stable interfaces? So if, if anybody wanted to add more collectors or ingestors, right, the interface itself would be just, you know, solidified. So we don't have any issues of, in adding more collectors and ingestors, but the interface itself cannot change, right? Because again, that come up, that could, could be a breaking change and so forth. Um, so we were highlighting in green, the ones that were, that we considered, and we can talk about this again, but that we considered were stable uh, in term, and then the arrows that kind of show up and I can share my screen if that is required, but if not, uh, I might have to, oh, I have to get permission to share my screen. Anyways, um, I don't know why, looks like I have it, okay. Uh, but basically the, the arrows, like for example, from collector, and then it has the arrow to ingesture, which is also green. Basically, it's like, uh, um, how is the communication between those two things? Like, is that has that been finalized? Like, is there is there anything that's missing there? Um, so we were just talking, you know, like so the collectors talk to the ingesters, collectors talk to the collector subscriber, and what other kind of, uh, you know, service to service communications are going on? Uh, you were kind of list listing all those kind of things out. And that, um, so the REST API would have its own life cycle. So I think as, you know, as, as things change, I think we'll det detach the REST API from the actual release um, so that it, you know, it could change. You could have, you know, whatever, whatever versions and so forth. Um, let's see. Yeah, I guess like, you know, for, for my purposes, what I'm really looking for is, you know, like, all of these things that aren't done reflected in GitHub issues, and right. then like ideally having like milestones attached, you know, in there mm -hmm. so that if somebody wants to come in and either as a potential user see like how close is this project to 1.0, or you know, as a contributor and says, you know, hey, I want to help get this to 1.0, where you know, where can I dig in? Um, yep. You know, that's I I don't see that reflected in the right in GitLab right now or GitHub right now. And it could just be that it's not clearly marked, but like that 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 was kind of what I was trying to get at with, with some of those questions. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I think the last time we spoke was I um right there GitHub has a like you said, milestones and projects. We can track like all the different tasks that are required. Uh, to each of 1.0 and so forth. So I think we were going to do that, but at the same time, like this discussion happened initially, it's like, okay, what does this mean? Uh, and where, where are we at? So I think next meeting, I think, you know, next meeting or the meeting after that, I think at least it might take, you know, probably two more meetings at least just to like, okay, what is, what does this mean? And then now let's write all the different, different, um, open all the issues mark them accordingly okay. and then, and then create like a project, a uh, project roadmap basically. It's like, okay, yeah. What does what does a one point mean? And then here are all the different tasks that need to be completed in order for that to be, you know, in order for the project to be a one point and it's ready for kind of release. Okay. I I can live with uh with that as one makes sure, you know, as long as it's a, a, you know in progress. I you know I'm mm -hmm. I'm content there. Yeah. So we left it off as a to do as you can see last week. Uh, so I, to keep discussing and then yeah and then after that we'll actually create actual issues this way that we can, we can track it properly as with milestones and so forth um anything i missed you know mike or jeff on that kind of stuff no i think that's good i think we we are still <clears throat> like this list is no is not done i think we're still yeah. in the the debate on a, mm -hmm. a, a number of these items yeah, so I think at least maybe two or three more meetings to actually come up with a final list of issues at the end before we can actually, we can say like, hey, this is done. And yeah, I think we should probably, because the other maintainers aren't here, I think we can probably leave it for next week at this point, considering that it's only three of us. 
Yeah, I mean, I think the 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 big one we probably just want to and and since we have Dana here, like if there's any um issues that that and I know Jeff, uh, you had brought up some stuff. I just want to make sure like um soon whether or not like we have any major issues with the sort of security baseline from the open SSF. Um, I think generally based on, on our discussions from before, like we're already following most of this stuff, but I do know that like, as an example here, right, we're the ones implementing this. So um, if there are things that don't make sense or that we want further clarification, we should sort of make sure that we, we, we do that. And then also, you know, um, there was discussion about, hey, we, you know, uh, I need to, we need to make sure that all the maintainers sort of agree to it, that like we could be potentially the sort of part of the pilot project around this. And Dana, do you want to sort of, sort of like give a brief introduction as to sort of the, the purpose of the security baseline and and the purpose of the sort of pilot and SIG? Yes, definitely. So uh, the, the purpose of the security baseline is to uplift the uh, security posture of the open source uh, uh, ecosystem as a whole. So that's a very ambitious goal. And I know everyone on this call is much more qualified than me to say that. Um, so the uh, the baseline is tackling the challenge from a kind of a, a requirements perspective. Uh, if a project starts uh, as an open source project, uh, if the project needs to uh, sustain its development, and also the consumption down the road, one is becoming widely adopted, then uh, we are saying these are the uh, minimal security requirements this project has to meet before it becomes generally available. Uh, so the uh, initiative actually was um, the, uh, uh, the outcome of last year's Linux Foundation Member Summit. So every year Linux Foundation hosts this annual summit and having all the, uh, I don't know who are invited, but uh, having uh, Linux Foundation level members joining and also the foundation uh, uh, members also joining. I think it's geared towards the Linux Foundation, OpenSSF's parent foundation level, uh, inviting those members to join. And uh, when the governing boards come together, stakeholders come together, they uh, basically talk about uh, uh, what are the, uh, the the priorities around making open source uh, software de development sustainable. And this security is obviously, obviously one of the pillars. Um, so after the member summit uh, in November last year, Omkar kicked off this initiative, he essentially reach out to all the Linux Foundation leadership uh, the head of each foundation about, hey, I'm kicking off this uh, security initiative. Um, uh, Dana Wang from our foundation is leading this and who from your foundation uh, can she partner with? So the as you can imagine, the response was very mixed. Um, so that, um, and also at the meantime, uh, CRA was heavily talked about. So that's another driver for uh, why we are asking for a common security uh, set of uh, standards besides the uh, executive order, which basically was the uh, uh, was why this foundation was found. So combining all these different considerations, uh, there are some um, expectations there, and also there are some mixed reactions to establish Linux foundation wide security baseline. So I took the approach to uh, start with our own foundation, uh, build a set of uh, requirements, and then uh, have our own foundation uh, eating our own cookies, prove it's working before we go again to other foundations about, hey, uh, this is what we have. Are you interested in partnering up with us? So that is the uh, that is the um, the uh, the background on this one. So I I did spend quite some time on that, and I want to show you probably uh, I did open attack, um, I did open attack issue attack pull request to merge the uh, security baseline file into the tag and also make it uh, the uh, security baseline as part of the OpenSSF lifecycle uh, uh, 
uh, requirements. So in OpenSSF, I think, uh, I'm assuming we are all aware, if you, uh, you start your project at Sandbox, and then the project will evolve into incubating before it's becoming graduation. And at each stage, it has different set of requirements. So the uh, baseline is structured around that. Uh, let me show you uh, what, what, what I have now, uh, which is under uh, tech review now. So once tech, uh, the, uh, the process is, uh, I worked on the uh, definition of the baseline and also reached out to a lot of maintainers about if this is uh, doable or if it's reasonable. And also uh, the ultimate uh, uh, kind of the authority is tech needs to uh, approve it. So I see myself as the maintainer of this security baseline, uh, get tax support and also make it a part of the life cycle. Uh, so uh, once we make it part of the life cycle, then it means we need our projects to adopt it, uh, find holes in the baseline and uh, make it better. So that's the driver for uh, asking uh, Guac to be uh, one of the pilot projects. Uh, the reason to ask uh, Guac as the pilot project is Guac is aggregating information for from all these different projects. And also it's going to be used not only by uh, the uh, uh, producers of the OSS, it's also going to be heavily used by the, uh, the consumers anywhere from startup to large enterprise corporations. So I feel if Guac can adopt this one, then um, if a large project can adopt the uh, security baseline, I think uh, it's a, it, set, it sets a good example. And also because of the complexities of Guac, I feel uh, I'm hoping to get uh, feedback from this group and uh, make the baseline better, uh, more effective. Um, so I think, yeah, so so Mike, do, do, how do we want to go? I think I kind of gave the background. Uh, how do, okay. Yeah, yeah, I think we're we're gonna ask for some feedback with from the group because I once again, um, we're already doing most of the stuff. I think the most of the questions are probably gonna be around, um, and I'll let Parth uh, go in a second here. I think it's mostly gonna be around, you know, like what are the expectations? What is also the sort of feedback loop, you know, look like, like if, for example, while implementing some of these things, we go, oh my gosh, the, you know, all these requirements, but this one are easy to do. This one, we just can't figure out a way to do it. Like, can we change the requirement, blah, blah, blah. I think a lot of, you know, um, there's going to be some open questions around that. Yeah. Um, but I'll, I'll, I'll let Parth uh, go. Yeah, I mean, I mean, that was that was most of my questions is basically it's like, <laughs> um, I haven't fully, I mean, this is the first time I'm like, I've heard about it, but I haven't actually looked at the document itself. So I'm not sure exactly what the requirements are. Um, so yeah, I mean, basically, you know, my kind of cover it is like, what is it? What is it? What are the requirements? Um, and I think we'll read myself. And, and then, yeah, if there's some that are kind of un unobtainable or like, hey, can we can we come back and be like, hey, this is this kind of doesn't seem reasonable um, and, and so forth. But yeah, if that's something that's that's open, you know, if you're open to that, then yeah, I think definitely. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Yeah. So the goal is to uh, the goal is to uh, make uh, the goal is to make the baseline achievable, and uh, uh, the uh, one principle I followed is if there is no tooling to support this baseline, I shouldn't be adding it because it's just not uh, it, it's adding uh, burdens. The security becomes a burden, becomes a blocker. So the goal is here is a security is uh, a, an enabler rather than a blocker, and yeah. around uh, yeah around uh, friction points and improvements to the baseline how we track. Even I think the the key question is is the baseline adoptable? Is the baseline uh, um, uh, are there holes that uh, are preventing us from moving forward? So all those questions and how what how do we track it? Um, how do we log issues? How do we provide this? How do we build this feedback loop? And eventually it's reflected in the uh, life uh, cycle in the tech process. So uh, I did submit a proposal to stand up a, a special interest group specifically around this security baseline. I feel at this point, uh, it's 
uh, I think at this point it's just beyond my capability to do this uh, alone. So I need a, a, a community. Uh, I think uh, we need a community to work on this collectively uh, to uh, make sure that uh, we are tracking the, uh, the the adoption. And also we are doing the measurements. We are collecting the right measurements. I think uh, one example is um, a, a scorecard score. Some people uh, always have mixed reactions about a scorecard score. So I hear that voice and I'm very cautious about using such score. And uh, the other thing is around uh, if say Guac adopting it, if you see issues, then how do you uh, uh, provide that feedback? I'm hoping through open issues to uh, this security baseline special interest group, then uh, the feedback gets logged. Um, we can prioritize all these different feedback and make sure that we update the security baseline documents and uh, uh, reflected it in the um, the tag process. So it's going to be uh, incrementally and also I'm hoping it's fast because it's impacting the life cycle uh, um, uh, uh, involvement. So I think a prioritization of those uh, issues logged to the special interest group and also uh, quickly address the urgent issues. That's the, uh, that's the approach I'm thinking we are taking. So we take three uh, pilot projects, the more the better. And uh, through the adoption process, I think the pilot projects would, would eliminate some of the friction points. And then after the, uh, the pilot adoption, we can um, make the baseline uh, in a good state for wide adoption within our own foundation. Uh, and in the meantime, another ambitious goal is to uh, bring this baseline for other foundations to adopt. So uh, that also comes down to one of the goals of this special interest group to address all the different concerns we may have through the process. Does it answer the question or address some of the concerns? Yeah, no, that makes sense. And I think as a follow on question real quick was the, um, is again, I haven't looked through some of the baseline requirements, but if it, if it, is it automatable, like via all stars or something? So if it, because if it is, then I think that's going to be, you know, getting buy-in from a lot of people is a lot easier because again, it's now, it, it does everything for you. Right. So it's like, you don't have to maintain anything or do anything. So, um, so I think if, if there is a method of making it automatable, I think it, it will get a, we'll get a lot, a lot more adoption versus this, Hey, here's a checklist. You have to go to all, do all this stuff manually kind of thing. Right. Yeah. So that's another, that's another aspect I'm hoping, uh, we can use, uh, the, we can achieve through this special interest group. So like, uh, I think your question is around uh, the, uh, I draw the uh, parallel between the security baseline and the badge program. Badge program, you have to attest. There is a bunch of uh, checklists. You, you, you check each one, say I'm a compliant. Uh, the baseline, I think uh, uh, we don't have it. We don't have the automation yet. So when tag, say when Guac goes to request uh, moving the project into um, graduation state. Guac has to look at these individual baselines and uh, make a decision. Yeah, is uh, Guac meeting the uh, is Guac meeting the uh, life cycle requirements? Uh, so um, I'm hoping through this uh, we have the baseline first, and then we figure out how we can automate the uh, decisioning process. Yeah, I, I probably also add on there, there's probably a bunch more that we probably want to do, right? So part of it is not just the the decisioning process, but also just, right, I can imagine looking at Guac, right? Not everybody wants to use Go Releaser, but like, hey, we have a GitHub action that's pretty well complete. Um, when we were doing stuff with the tool belt, you know, there seemed to be um, the potential there to say, hey, maybe it's worth making that generic because other projects might come in and say, oh my gosh, doing salsa and generating S bombs and doing all these things. Uh, I don't want to learn all of that. Oh, great. Well, you can maybe include this GitHub action and we'll 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 do it for you. Um, and so as part of like, once again, that's separate from necessarily, you know, 
they are for Guac. But then yep. also yep. one of the things that is potentially valuable for Guac as a project here is, hey, we're building out a POC to run Guac. Uh, we're just still trying to get get the money released so that we can spin up the AWS account. Um, is, you know, we could, right, you know, essentially have this feedback loop now where we're ingesting all of this information like scorecard, like whatever else, like, you know, Salsa, uh, SBOM, et cetera, into something that we can then use inside of uh, Guac to better understand, you know, what the use cases are and also hit, for example, this Linux foundation use case of what does it take to, you know, like not necessarily saying it's all 100% Guac, but like, hey, Guac can help um, you know, better uh, indicate, you know, where things uh, might be good, where things might not be good, what are what is missing, um, what is the life cycle of that, you know, if, if we see that, hey, in a new version, you know, yo, the new version doesn't have an S-bomb, what happened? Um, we're keeping track of of all of that. Uh, and so there, there's definitely value there as well for us in our own sort of use case in, in spinning up uh, a guac and performing some of those analysis and seeing if it's, it's if it's valuable to folks. Yeah, definitely. I think uh, uh, you touched on uh, a key aspect of this uh, uh, baseline. Uh, the security baseline is not only about asking people to uh, follow these security requirements. It's also to um, um, make sure that we push automation uh, forward. So. Uh, the, the areas that uh, Mike identified, I think those are uh, much needed for the baseline adoption and also advancing the baseline. Dana, yeah. Um, so I think two things here. So, you know, Guac as a project, looking to be an early adopter and provide feedback. Um, I think we're all on board with that. Uh, yeah. You know, that's an easy, easy thing for us. Um, one thing that I think is uh, also useful is, you know, per us as a project, we have a lot of experience um, with SBOMs, particularly using SBOMs to remediate vulnerabilities in your project. Um, so I think uh, as a group we'll we have some probably have some good feedback to provide on the on the baseline in that area like and what's going to be effective versus what's not going to be effective. Um, so while adopting the baseline, you know we can provide feedback on like what's easy, what's hard, but we also have like some some good um, again general experience with the with all of the contributors here. I know out of us only Mike's on the tech. <laughs> So I uh, upgraded my Zoom and it floats. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. So how sh should we be resp replying on the TAC um, issue as well, or is that mostly for TAC feedback? As far as if we have um, contributions for like uh, improvements in general on the baseline. Yeah. So the uh, the process I got from the TAC is. Uh, so this uh, security baseline special interest group will be the uh, maintainer uh, maintaining group for the baseline document. And uh, all the uh, contributions, all the uh, updates will be happening in the uh, security baseline special interest group. Mm -hmm. And then we have to submit PR. Uh, once we agree on, yeah, once we agree on this document is in good state, uh, for a tech update. So we have to merge the documents. We have to submit a PR to merge the document into the tech uh, security baseline. So currently uh, the security baseline, I checked it into the, um, I checked it into the tech uh, a repo because tech uh, direction is incorporated it into the, uh, the tech uh, operating model. So uh, let me pin you, um, the uh the the PR I submitted the file. Oh, I keep going to the wrong place. Yeah. So in summary, um. 
we will work on the uh, document improvement uh, and all the uh, uh, taking out feedback to uh, update the document and also provide uh, um, uh, mini uh, tips for other uh, adopters, other projects uh, through this security baseline special uh, SIG. And then documentation wise, we will feed the documents into the tag process for them to incorporate it into the life cycle. So, so Jeff, do you see uh, uh, do you see holes in that process? It's a cumbersome process. <laughs> no, no, that sounds good. I just want to I just want to know how we can engage with our you know, with the experience of of the whole project here, um, particularly like I said around uh, remediating vulnerabilities and your dependencies and and what the right best way to go about that is. Um, you know, I think on on the, the the graduated stage on the third the third row it's also the first row after graduated um it's all about you know publicly known vulnerabilities are fixed um so i think that row is where where we have a lot of experience in um particularly like dependence because you know we, we, you need to you need to delineate between vulnerability re reporting on the project itself versus uh, vulnerabilities found in the dependencies. Um, so our experience there, you know, will show us the difference between things like an S bomb that's generated at build versus, you know, uh, a scanner that runs, uh, uh a static analysis on a lock file. Uh, all of those things make a big difference on how, how this stuff plays out. And the Quark project has been, uh, ingesting S bombs and analyzing S bombs generated from all the different tools, uh, and figuring out how to turn that into like again vulnerability remediation and direct and transitive dependencies. Um, so we could have some good things to provide, some good information to provide on how to implement, how to verify um, that's going to be accurate. Um, so if we should be bringing that to the SIG. Uh, we can figure out which one of us can show up <laughs> and and kind of not just represent ourselves, but but represent the project. Yeah, definitely. I think uh, Guac will be able to bring a lot of uh, uh, good stuff to the uh, the group and then get it propagated to other projects. Uh, so yeah, I think reuse the reuse the um, the Guac output. It will be super valuable. And also uh, CNCF, uh, Eddie Knight is super interested in the uh, initiative. Um, so I talked about this um, uh, SIG in last uh, tech meeting last Tuesday. Uh, I think I was cornered about, uh, hey, who, who are going to lead it? And uh, out of desperation, I asked Lieberman to be the, the co-chair. Uh, Eddie was not in that meeting. And uh, 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 Michael uh, graciously uh, graciously uh, accepted it. Uh, so, oh, okay. so, yeah, folks from CNCF are also interested. Uh, so the, uh, the there there has been some discussions in CNCF space. Um, they want to have a menu in OpenSSF to bring uh, foundations together to have a Linux foundation wide uh, security baseline. Yeah, uh, I was just going to say, yeah, um, and as I mentioned before, assuming uh, it, it happens to be at a time that I can actually make it, yes, yes, absolutely, um, since it was, you know, largely stuff that we were already starting to try to do anyway within the OpenSSF, um, yeah, like, obviously, coming, I'm coming at this from a couple of different perspectives, right, um, one is the perspective of, hey, the TAC, you know, Yes, we want to make sure that folks are doing largely the right things from a security perspective. And we also want to figure out where are there things we should be doing. And we just don't have within the community the resources to be able to do that. Right. You know, and do we need to have new tools, blah, blah, blah. And then we can take that back to the TAC um, to say, hey, we need funding for this or we need funding for that to kind of get that done. And hey, with 
guac growing and whatever. It'd be nice to be able to say, well, hey, guac, we're struggling with this thing. Can we get a security audit for it? And this is part of the security baseline. Let, let us kind of get some of that. Um, uh, the same thing too, obviously, anything we could do to promote a, a you know, other OpenSF projects and show that they are sort of the shining beacons of 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 security um and that they're doing all the right stuff uh and then um in addition from the TAC perspective you know how can we make that easier overall long term right automation um within uh like for securing this stuff but also then providing data to the folks who need it both um the maintainers of projects as well as the consumers of projects to say, hey, like, you know, a project will probably want to come in and say, great, you know, I trust the Linux Foundation, um, you know, and I want to make sure that the project that I'm about to use from the Linux Foundation, uh, is it hitting the Linux Foundation security baseline? If it is, I feel more safe pulling that in. Um, and what would that sort of require? Um, and then if I take off the tack hat, put on the, um, you know, uh, uh, put on uh, the guac maintainer hat, obviously anything we can do to um, potentially pull in more contributors to the project, right? Hey, we're struggling with, you know, implementing this security feature. That could be something that we can get additional contributors to. Um, also from the perspective of uh, uh, making guac seen as that shining beacon, like that first thing, Hey, help promote the the Guac project, um, and anything we could do on that end as well to help promote the Guac project. Like this is the stuff, sort of stuff of talking to Dana about what could we potentially get out of it from a, you know, um, you know, give a shout out at like an upcoming, uh, you know, security conference or set of security conferences or or KubeCon or whatever, um, that sort of stuff. Uh, what about also um, from the perspective of then? go the other direction of, hey, Guac just so happens to also be a security tool that is potentially used, uh, could be potentially used as part of the security baseline, right? Because, you know, we do that thing of like, we're not just, you know, if scorecard and some of these other things are those snapshots in time, we can track it over, over time, we can provide visibility into, you know, for example, folks like Dana, you know, great, who is not a, like, what, Open uh, Open SSF projects are not following the security baseline, or what? What projects were following the security baseline last month that aren't this month? Um, that sort of stuff. And and you know, hey, Guac, and you know, that's potentially a huge use case for Guac and help provide um, you know uh, you know stuff there. Um, and then I think the other things are just around making what we're doing from a security space just more scalable. Right. You know, once again, it would be great if we didn't have to necessarily manage some of the um, GitHub actions we currently are, if it, they were managed by something else and we just import them into what we're doing. Hey, that could be cool. Um, this is for like the salsa for the S bomb for scorecard for yada yada. If there's, you know, just an easy way to say, hey, I click this button and it applies the security baseline with maybe a couple of things I need to do to fix. Um, that could be pretty cool. And then if I take off that hat and I sort of, I haven't been an end user in a while, but like if I take that end user perspective again, um, that thing of like, oh my gosh, I want to, you know, very quickly, you know, be able to integrate this into my process in ingesting software where I can go and say, great, all the LF projects, I want to check if they're doing those, you know, if they're following the baseline, how can I figure out if they're following the baseline? Maybe I have access to the guac that they, you know, maybe it's a public guac in the future, or maybe there's just a attestation that I can consume that, you know, the Linux foundation has an attestation service that queries guac, generates an attestation, they can pull that in and, um, you know, uh, say, yes, uh, guac is following the security baseline and here is like where their SBOM lives, here's where that lives, here's where that lives and so on. So th there's, there's definitely a lot of interesting um, opportunity there. Actually, yeah, I want to show you a picture really quick. It's still, uh, I, I, I'm still drafting it, but uh, I think uh, kind of uh, what I'm hoping is uh, if you are seeing my screen, 
I'm basically uh, drawing the diagram of how the open SSF technologies fit together to support uh, the dependency management. And uh, I'm hoping that uh, at the guac layer, so uh, this one is actually, I based this um, diagram of the security tool belt. So I think uh, Mike is familiar with it. Um, so the I'm hoping that guac becomes the layer that can abstract all the different tools um, uh, away. So um, people can just use a single tool to get all the security insights around a pro uh, around a project, and then use that to make decisions, either um, uh, make ingestion policy enforcement decisions, or uh, even within the open uh, source uh, ecosystem, we can use Guac to make certain decisions. I'm not sure, so very curious to hear your thoughts on that. Um, but I feel the layer above where the policy enforcement stays that relies on Guac as the layer to provide all the uh, information. So I'll pin the, I'll pin the link here. Uh, uh, I made it public. So yeah, just in case uh, you have time to look and give me some feedback. Cool. Yeah, I, I like the, the diagram um, and how it's laid out. Uh, it's funny because we actually have um, uh, similar um, uh, things as well. Uh, so I'll probably have to ask for access. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. it's all good. Uh, I'll ping you on Slack afterwards. But yeah, um, yeah, I think the that that diagram you showed is is in, a, an important one, and there's a bunch of folks who are also starting to talk around that, like more generically, that problem of how do you sort of clearly um, define the the uh, what inputs and outputs you should be expecting from your software development lifecycle. So like. You know, we want to be able to start tracking stuff like Git commits and who signed that commit and who, you know, is associated with writing that software. Um, and then, uh, you know, um, and not necessarily signing the commit, but like, you know, Git tough or something similar or like who has attested that they were the ones who wrote this commit and potentially even said, hey, I wrote this commit on this laptop, that kind of thing. Um, but also from the build perspective, like, hey, is that build, you know, the build should be generating a salsa and an S bomb. Otherwise, it's not considered a valid secure build. Um, stuff like that, I think, is is going to be coming up there. And I, I see that a lot of the open SSF and related, you know, security, open source security projects as being a big part of the um, driving that. Uh, anything else? Uh, so if there's nothing else there, um, so I know we more or less don't have the, the full quorum of, of all the maintainers, but were there any other um, topics that we wanted to discuss in the last 15 minutes. I think just a, a agenda for the, the community call. Yeah. So What's been merged recently? Yeah, I was going to take a look at that. <laughs> I think uh, maybe Ben, did you want to show off the uh, the guac.sh updates? Yeah, uh, I had actually put a few things on already. Um, oh, okay. So uh, basically, you know, some quick rundown of the stats from last quarter in terms of community stuff, and then talk about you know the uh, focus on documentation that I'm going to try and do for this quarter. Um, and then a couple of the um, guac.sh updates and the SBOM Everywhere catalog. 
So I pre-populated those in the meeting notes mm -hmm. or in the doc. Um, I'll add the link into this doc as well. Oh, the ability to do vulnerability scanning on ingestion. I think that was a, that was a big one. Um, what else? When was the last release? I think June 6th. Oh, and then the, the ability to delete um, has S bomb, has salsa, and certify bold. That was on the big one. I think a lot of people were asking for that. So, and then if 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 Nathan is up for it, I think uh, maybe showing off the end-to-end -end updates, the uh, uh, integration tests. And then I think besides that, I think we should maybe uh, start talking about the one point Get some feedback from the users in terms of like what they would like to see from the one point I feel like we've done that before and it's not getting anything. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> if it's just open ended, we don't get anything. We need to have maybe we need to have like a proposal. Yeah. Maybe as have all the issues and stuff like that. Not necessarily the issues, but the you know what we think the requirements are. Okay. Yeah. I also just you know, if it being summer, I'm not sure how many people will actually be attending live. We yeah. tend to see a little bit of a drop. So, and, um, I know we were discussing the, you know, I think this is kind of Brendan was going to set it up, but like for new users, uh, getting some feedback in terms of what they would like to, you know, what they, they don't understand, understand how do I make how do we make it easier to use? But again, that's something maybe you can write a proposal for first and then bring it up to the so yeah, it's not worthwhile. People showing up to the community meeting are usually not new users. Yeah. But maybe they're yeah. maybe they have um feedback or ideas. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Um Yeah, I think those are the big ones. That should, that should be good. Yeah, I think that's all I had. That's all I had, so I think there's nothing right. else we can drop for drop 10 minutes early. Sounds good. All right. Thank you. Later.